Hey everybody out there, I'm Aaron, I'm here with my co-host Zach. Hi. You're listening to A to Z Podcast, episode 74. Today's guest is Jason Leal, writer and director of the upcoming Spindletop movie. It's like they're trying to be too meta. We're gonna make them an offer they can't refuse. Much better. Yeah. You can, you can, can I buy you a drink. You can't can just well, well, I mean, he did pick out somebody we know. Well, you sidestepped the question. That technology does no, not no. exist. If this is your first time listening, thanks for checking us out. A to Z is a Southeast Texas locally produced podcast with new episodes out weekly on all major podcast platforms. Semi-weekly. But you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram where we post updates, clips, and a host of extra content. Also, don't forget about our Facebook groups, A to Z Podcast Group and A to Z Movie Night, the groupening, where you can talk to other listeners about our episodes, share funny memes. Uh, we do live streams in Movie Night, and we have a schedule for that now. And I'm going to release this episode on the 26th, and tonight, if you you listen to it today we'll be doing twister with mary hooker that's right get at us get at yeah. us well anyway you know this was a this was a cool episode yeah this was one of these very special episodes where people reach out to us and uh yeah jason he came all the way from houston yeah he drove in he's doing big things he's doing kickstarters this isn't his first movie either no. uh we get into that we get into what he's done in the past a lot of it's kind of it has to do with like Raising money in the first place, a lot of it has to do with logistics Mm -hmm. and uh, also... Just the idea behind this movie in general and talking about uh, oil and gas and its importance in Southeast Texas and the Spindletop boom. And and Texas in general. Yeah, or the world in general. Uh, And I I found it very refreshing that even though he's a Houston guy, he has a reverence for this area and really gives us our due as far as uh, the importance of, of Texas oil. Yeah. Yeah. Well, enjoy this episode with Jason Leal. Let's go dance by the river, just for fun till our feet are covered in sand. All the while drinking bottles of wine till we simply cannot stand and we'll call it home. We'll call it home. That this old swamp can bring you down When the fog starts rolling in You just have to turn around and head for home You head for home Guys in a uh, boardroom, mm-hmm. uh, like uh, people like My- uh, Michael Halabudi, and uh, who wrote the book on Spindletop. Mm-hmm. He was like a big, famous uh, geologist. Uh, Texas A&M has like a building named after him. And then also, uh, I-, I put Ross Sterling in there, who's like uh, founder of Humble Oil and was a uh, ex governor, and just just some other people. And they're they're going to do a-, a Hollywood movie, right? There's like a writer there. They're gonna, right. mm-hmm. they're interviewing Patillo Higgins. So Patillo Higgins comes in with his wife and they're asking him questions like, okay, we're going to do this movie. You know, what was the first time you, you ever went out to the hill? And then Patillo Higgins starts to talk about the first time he ever went out to the hill. And then based, you know, I, I read his bi- Patillo Higgins' biography and, and he ran away from school when he was uh, like 12 or 14 or something. Mm. I mean, he like literally jumped out the window and ran away from school. <laughs> so I, I piece them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I put that. Yeah, you know, I put that scene in there, and then I put a, a fictionalized scene whenever he goes up out to the uh, 
to the big hill. Yeah. You know, the the Sour Springs Hill and kind of sees this Indian there and has this encounter with an Indian and then that that's pretty much but that's pretty much the the, the short film. Mm. So uh so you're hoping to kind of use that to to get get funding for a longer feature, I guess. For sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh yeah, it's 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 just something that, that, and there's components of the short film. I know I can do the flashback sequence of him as a kid. Um, depending on how much I raise, I can add more stuff to it, like put in horses, and then right, I raise right, more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The more money I raise, the more added scenes that I can add to the to the short film. Yeah, because doing like a historical period piece is kind of tricky. You got to yeah, get, it's hard to yeah. it's hard to track down all nice. the. It's hard to track down all the the period objects. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it, yeah. If you want, especially if you're doing like a period school scene, yeah. you have to have period school desks, chalkboard. For sure. For you know. Sure. Yeah. It yeah. can. It can. And you can hard. flub it, but the people that are are going to it for the history are are who know about the history are right. going to be calling right. you out on it or something like. They're that. They're gonna be like, "Why is there so many plastics in this?" <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I I'll definitely. I'm definitely going to put as much attention as I can into it and yeah. whatever the budget will allow. That's how, that's how good it'll look. Yeah. Know? So yeah. what, yeah. what kind of, uh, what kind of investors are you hoping to rope in? Do you, do you find, do you think that some energy companies will probably, uh, come to your rescue? I don't mean rescue well, like you're in trouble, but re- you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, well the, the short film, I'm going to start going to do a Kickstarter. Uh, this will be the third Kickstarter that I've done. Mm. And, uh, I'm going to start it. I'm thinking around May in okay. May and uh, it'll kind of be a test for the feature film. I'm just going to kind of put it out there. Uh, going to try to ra- – I, I would like to raise 15000 Uh I'm going to put it the, – the bar is like 5000 So if, if I don't I – can, I can raise – I can raise more than 5000 Sure, right. sure. Yeah. Uh, you got to so, set your bare minimum and then everything else will just increase the production value. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But I mean, but if I don't raise five, I don't. Raise, I can't get anything, you know. So, right. You yeah. know how those things work. So, uh, but basically, uh, I want to kind of test the waters to see who's out there who can come to my uh, aid and who's willing to put in some money, at least for the short film. Mm-hmm. And then with the short film, you know, obviously, I'm going to polish up the script. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got a first draft written of the script, and I have to really polish it out yeah. and and uh, ma- make it make it pretty good and then uh and then once you know that with the short film i'll try to you know attract some some big investors some a production company or uh or even you know just institutional investors because i think yeah. that in houston i mean come on i've i've talked to a lot of people my wife's a petroleum engineer yeah and um and it's like they she's got her her friends that they all are really anticipating that they, they, they want to see the film yeah. yeah and they 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 have a lot of pool in their companies you know all these engineers they can go to the yeah like, yeah they can go and be like hey uh how about you <clears throat> throw in a couple of grand and i'll be like yeah all right anything for you <laughs> right yeah i'm yeah, just acting yeah. like they have so much money they don't well the, old, the old companies are loaded and they are always looking for ways to help improve their image i think so yeah absolutely <laughs> it's actually yeah. a pretty good approach well especially yeah. if you can make a film that um that they want to see i think you know what i mean I, I, mm-hmm. I would if i was in charge of some energy company or or something like that mm-hmm. i would i would definitely want to see that film yeah and as much as uh as much as maybe some people complain about the oil industry i mean it's kind of that's kind of what made the region yeah. that we live in, you know, yeah. this region wouldn't be what it was if it wasn't for Spindletop and, and, and those people that were doing that back then. Well, humanity, like the, the world that we live in wouldn't, oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. We, we wouldn't have computers. We wouldn't, wouldn't have plastics. Mm. It's like, you know, we, we wouldn't be where we are yeah. if, if it was, or we would, it, it wouldn't be the same anyway. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it wouldn't be the same. We definitely wouldn't be as populous. That is, that is for sure. There what would not, mean? it means there wouldn't be, Seven point eight billion people, or whatever there is, probably not on no. the face of the planet. Yeah, oil is yeah. a good lubricant. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny, man. They uh they didn't really know what to do with oil when they first found it. What they it use was, it for in the beginning? Well, whenever people, whenever like oil was kind of first discovered, they just discarded. They're like, man, what? Because they discovered it by flooding it's like a byproduct or something. Yeah, it was well, sort of. They discovered it whenever it would flood salt mines. 
So people would have a salt mine. They would be getting out salt. Man, I got this oil in my and, salt. And they would they would crack through a wall, <laughs> a perforated wall. Then it would get filled with with oil with crude. And they'd be like, "Man, I made so much investments on this salt. What am I supposed to do with all this?" And they would try to figure out a way to throw it away. You know, they had everything mm-hmm. else. They uh, at that time things were like uh, whale oil, and there was a humongous uh, there was a humongous like lobby behind that too. You know, just like how Houston is the center of oil economy of the entire world. Mm. You know, it used to be like Boston and Nantucket was like the energy center because it had well oil. And, and until Drake's Volley in Pennsylvania, uh, where they found out that it's not just like a happenstance, but oil is uh, readily available and it's in a lot of places. They were like, hmm, what can we use? Oh, you know, this is way better than whale oil. It's way cleaner and we don't have to kill these majestical beasts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, mm-hmm. I even uh, th- there. There's a scene where where Patillo Higgins does go up to, whenever he has his brick making business, he goes up to uh, I, I put Titusville, Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. and he has a discussion with like an old oil guy, like kind of like a Drake, okay, kind yeah. of guy. Uh, and then they, I make mention about like a you know, we're gonna put all these whale whale farmers, you know, <laughs> whale whalers out of business and everything, so stuff like that. So, yeah. but I try to put all of the hints in there that the you know oil and gas people would, you know, really catch on and really yeah. enjoy enjoy hearing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's part of our culture here. You know, Houston or Beaumont, no matter where you are, it really is. It's part of our culture. How many for sure? How many logos do you see with the oil derrick on it? You yeah. know what I mean? Like everything from grocery stores to beer uh to even like probably potato chip bags and stuff like that it's it's i think i've seen potato chip bags with with oil yeah exactly uh so let me ask you something too while do you do you uh leave houston do you come here for day trips every now and then to sort of i know we have the internet now and you can research Mm -hmm. anytime but do you ever come here and and kind of look at things and oh yeah for for sure for sure what what have you found to be a good resource for you well i i i've scoured the library uh, a, a couple of times i do want to come back and and check out the uh terrell library yeah yeah, yeah since yeah. they i mean because it was closed hmm. i don't it's know really it's really nice yes it's it, open it might have been closed it's, it's for renovation it was it was for for, for, the, for harvey yeah harvey, harvey. Yeah, yeah. uh yeah so now it's finally open so i can come and and really sit there for a day or two and and really get in there and yeah i've, I've found some really good documents uh over over here in beaumont and uh, yeah, I just uh, you know probably schedule some interviews and stuff would would be great, and just try to get as much information as I can. But it, I mean, it, it happened a long time ago, so oh I, yeah, I would I, I know there wouldn't be anybody who had who would have first hand knowledge. Yeah, you wouldn't have first hand oh, no. knowledge, but you might have like might have like second st- or third cra- yeah third hand knowledge. You could find uh you could find a senior citizen whose grandpa was around. I'm sure. And I mean, there's also the, uh, the historical commission, I think that we have down here. And those guys know pretty good bit about a lot of different things. And they, I think Mm -hmm. they're always willing to pretty much talk about it. So it's pretty, we might be able to connect you with some people. Yeah. Terrell library is great. They're going to have some, they're going to have old books, old registries. Mm -hmm. They're going to have, uh, Mm -hmm. they have a lot of archives. Yeah. Yeah. And they have a lot of cool stuff laying around too. (laughs) You'll probably, you'll probably see, uh, old drill bits, you know, different things from that era that they have in there. Have you Mm -hmm. ever been out to the Lucas Gusher? Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Several times, and I've seen the the water come out. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, no, it, that's like the museum. I'm talking about like where it actually it's still in production. Oh, um, I did. I I went out there a lot, like a few years back, and then there was a. Um, I saw like it. You know, you go out. There's like a platform, and there's like some like a flagpole, right? Yeah, it's well, it's it's private property. I I've been out there because I used to work in the oil field and I used to, I tested uh-huh. it before, but if you just go out on that road, you'll see it it'll say like Lucas Oil Field rig number whatever. Mm-hmm. And you just look around and it's kind of interesting just to look around because the land hasn't changed at all. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? A big dome or something like that's that. That's not it's well, I mean it's a uh, the salt domes down the road, but it's really interesting to realize that it's flat and barren and ugly and you mm-hmm. just look around and you could just imagine how it was in 1901 it was pretty much the same just no roads like mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. 
marshy and lowlands and stuff like that. And it's very yeah. interesting to think that that happened all the way back then, but it's still producing. Like yeah, that same yeah. that same well is still producing. Yeah, over a hundred years yeah, later. Yeah, not with that pressure flow, but it is interesting. Yeah, I and and I want to. Um, I, I I have a local producer, Doug uh, Underwood. That sounds he, familiar, actually. Yeah, uh, he's. I have a producer over here and a producer in Austin that we're gonna we're all gonna we're gonna make it happen, you know. But uh, we're gonna try to try to film on get some shots on the Natchez River. Okay, yeah, and al- along the river and then around there and as close as I can get, you know, for for the short film for sure. Yeah, yeah, at least. So um, so that's what I what I plan to do, and I, I think we're gonna try to shoot in September. So. Okay, you're gonna shoot for yeah. September. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Um, so you were in U of H uh, in in a, a, what exactly were you doing? You were in like a landman. Yeah, you were uh, in a landman program. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So how did you make the switch from doing that to doing film? Well, I had already been, I had already gotten into film okay. by the time I was doing that. Uh, but and I think. I mean, I mean, I I had always loved watching films when I ever since I was a little kid, and then I remember we made them whenever I was like fourteen years old with my dad's like camcorder and stuff, and I was, yeah. like, I was like, man, this is like so hard to get so many people to help you. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, ah, I'm gonna, you know, I, you know, and I I, I went to, I went to school for a business major. I, okay, I, yeah. I majored in business, and um, because I thought that that was more um, uh, uh, practical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's more yeah. practical. And and filmmaking wasn't like a thing. Like I that was not I know. Yeah, I, I, I I went to film school, trust me. I wasted my money. I know what you're I, I did you about mean. a semester as well. So. Yeah. Well, uh I mean I don't I mean it it's I don't know. I I I did I did thing the thing that I thought was more the most practical right. and I I bounced around. I did sales for like 10 years or something and I've sold insurance, I've sold merchant services. Sold uh, health insurance, life insurance, disability, Aflac, all of that stuff. And uh, but doing sales, you get it really. It makes you a better producer for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes you. It makes you be able to get up and knock on doors and go to locations. I and can definitely see it. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that that really helped me out as far as being a better. Uh, well, I mean, because you know, let's let's face it. If you're a filmmaker, you got to produce and you have to raise money and all of that. All of that is filmmaking. Yeah, you got to wear all them hats. Yeah, yeah, and you because nobody else is going to do. I mean, it's like, oh, fi- can you find me some money or can you do all this? St-? You know, it's like you got to do it yourself. Yeah, and so, um, so that's what I. But then ultimately, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this film stuff, and I think around. Uh, 2012 or something. I I started getting into like film groups over it in Houston and stuff. And I think there was like the film races. There was a thing called Splatterfest. Huh. I did editing and filmed for that. It was like a 48 hour kind of film race with yeah, like a yeah. horror horror film race uh, in Houston. Oh, splatter, back. huh? Okay, splatterfest. I get, yeah, like a okay. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's but you also on, you also you were in uh, you were in the Boomtown Festival as well, right? Recently, yeah. Uh, so I was helping out people 2012, 2013, helping out on other people's projects and just going to film meetups and everything and talking about it. And then 2014, I raised money for my own for my own short film. So I've done I've completed three short films. I've released one and a half. I mean, the second one is. I'm still and tweaking it. Oh, okay. I'm still tweaking okay. it. It's kind of you know the the two of them I have like in post production, and I'm just editing them and and everything. But yeah, so I I got into Boomtown Film Festival with my first two short films. So, uh, and they you know they're each film each short. You can make filmmaking as as easy or as hard as you want it to be. You can have two people talking in a room, or you can have like fifteen or twenty. 25 people in a public place. There's so many variables and it's oh, yeah. just like Absolutely. one giant, yeah, it's like one giant, um, uh, you know, like, a. uh, it's, it's just, a like scientific, it's an experiment. Basically. Right. 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 So, uh, 
and you have all the different variables. You have public place versus a private place, closed off place. You have the wardrobe. You have all of the, the the set design and everything. You have the camera. You have you know, all of these. Yeah, there's a reason why credits take five minutes to roll. You know? <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. But you know, I mean, you know, I, I I've been and, and I've I've been to South by Southwest. I've been to Sundance, and at Sundance, I saw I saw a short film. The guy said he made it for like you know a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, it was at Sundance, and it was just like two people in a room, you know, and um, I was like, well, you know, I mean, shit, I could make something like that, but it's like I I choose to do bigger, you know, raise right. raise some money for for my films and do it like as if it's like a Hollywood, you know, movie. So yeah, and you can't really if you're gonna especially it's it's all about the subject matter, right? And in sure. the film you want to do. Uh, is about the genesis of the Texas oil boom. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't mm-hmm. really be doing it justice by having just two guys in a room. So, for sure, for yeah. sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yours is going to take a lot more resources. Like we were yeah. talking about the period set pieces and all of that. Yeah. yeah, and and that's that's kind of the way that's the way that I want to do it. So, like the first film that I made, I raised I raised about fourteen thousand. You know, spent about fourteen thousand over four days for production. Uh, second one, I, I, I spent most of my own money, but it was like about eh, three, thirty-five hundred or something like that. I shot over two days and I had like two or three days pickups just kind of going there with, you know, uh, but then, and then the third one I shot for, I did it for about 6,000 and then we shot for two days up in Austin and, uh, it was, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't I don't want to make films under that cir- kind of circumstances anymore because <laughs> just 2 days was oh, yeah. was not enough and and we and we went we had like 13 locations. Wow. That's a- so I mean, well, we had we had five major locations but we had an interior exterior at each of the locations. Yeah. You know, and then was you know, your exterior a- just like establishing shot and then moving side? No, 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 no. I mean, like with the subjects. Oh, we, okay. We, wow. We had I mean, yeah. Yeah, like uh, walking, j- j- getting a girl walking in and out of like sure. stores and stuff like that. Dude, uh, that sounds that sounds brutal. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Sounds I, brutal. I I should have I should have sent you guys links uh, yeah. before I came over here, but I'll, I'll send it to you afterwards. Okay, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll hopefully yeah. we can share them um, whenever we get this this episode out. <laughs> Hi, this is Jake Hooker of Jake A. Hooker, and you're listening to A to Z Podcast. A to Z Podcast is funded in part by our patrons on Patreon. If you would like to support us, head over to patreon.com slash A to Z BMT. All right, guys, this is our break portion. We're working with uh, Belmont Events and helping them uh, share the, the good word on what's going on in the Southeast Texas area. And for this uh, for this break, we're going to do some classic movie nights coming up uh, at the Jefferson Theater, the almighty Jefferson Theater. On July 5th, you're going to have Top Gun. Uh, doors are at 6, movie at 7.30. It's going to be $5 ticket. I really, I really implore you to dress up in a in a flight suit Please and come do. come there like At that. At least aviators. <laughs> uh, and on July nineteenth, we have Jaws. It's it's not a summer without going to see Jaws. Yeah, I think they do Jaws every year. I think so. It's it's the first summer blockbuster. Bring and your pool floaties. That's it. Bring your arm your your wingies. You mm-hmm. know stuff like that. Bring your kids. Doors are open at six. The movie starts at seven thirty, and it's five dollars. And what better, what better way to watch a movie than yeah. a historic Jefferson a historic Theater? historic classic theater. And if you uh, want to look any farther out than that, you can go to discoverbeaumont.com, and they have a calendar up there of other events. They have alley shows. Uh, pretty, They have a lot of cool stuff going on Yeah, they're on doing this cool things, and yeah. it's going to be ramping up. We're pretty excited. Yeah. Well, well, let's get back to this episode. Man, it's 
You were, well, you're talking about like liking film, and you mentioned the whole thing about how it takes so much work. And it's just like I think that was the big thing that made me stop wanting to do well, films is realizing just how much it takes to do it. You know? Yeah, I like I said, like when I was 14, I wanted to make movies. Yeah. I, wa- I wanted to make films, and then we made films. We made a few of them, and it was just so tough. And it was like so many people that you have to like. Yeah. Have in yeah. there. you have to, to hurt or you have to you have to know how to do it yourself, and then if you know how to, if you do know how to do it yourself, if you can do it yourself, it's gonna yeah. just it's gonna just just be a, just a giant uh, yeah. yeah a yeah. giant yeah, yeah, yeah. expenditure yeah. of energy, you know. And and I think I think in the back of my mind, and and I'm I'm older, right? So uh, in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, well, you know, once the digital cameras come out, and once it gets cheaper. <laughs> Then I'll kind of step in. I got some time. I was like, I got time. I mean, it's a good idea. It, it happened. Yeah. It happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but now you have like a, every everybody's making everything, so that's like a flood of. Everything. Yeah, I think it. I think it helps you though. Really, um, I know exactly what you're saying. Everyone with a, a Canon, you know, five D, you know, thinks they're a filmmaker now. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody the, with a red thinks they're a filmmaker. Yeah, and at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the red. It, it doesn't matter how expensive or how much money you spend on your equipment if you don't know composition. You know what sure, I mean? Sure. Like, it doesn't matter um, how good your script is if you can't find the right actors, right? It doesn't matter. Sure, it sure. doesn't matter how ambitious your project is unless you can find funding. So, mm-hmm. I really think that only helps you. Uh, and kind of like when I started in film school was uh, 2006. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I would go to I would go to all these. Uh, uh, film festivals and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and I've seen like the quality, like the the quality has sort of gone down, not up. Sure, sure. So when I go to a film festival now, uh, there'll be like many, many more entries, and there's like mm. little diamonds in the rough you have to pick out. So I really think it helps if if you know what you're doing and stuff like that. For I think sure. it's it, it's easier to stand out now if you're if you're making films. Okay, well, yeah. Okay, well, that, well, that's that's good. You know. sounds good. <laughs> but I know, I know what you mean. Like it is. It is kind of a uh, flood of content. It's a flood of content. And yeah. if, you, if you step back and look at it as a whole, it can be very uh, uh, daunting. You're like, man, who's going to see who's going to see my stuff? Sure. You know sure. what I mean? Like, yeah, who's yeah. going to see my film? Yeah. But I think you have the right idea. You know, if you're I think you're you want to. And this is just me like, you know, projecting, but I feel like you want to make this for an intended audience. I think it's going to help you out. For sure. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, uh, and you know, I guess my, I've, I've done three short films and my evolution has been, you know, I've, I've, I've done it all, you know, I've done yeah. it. I mean, I, I, I write it, produce it, uh, direct it, I pretty much edit it, all of them. And, um, and I, I think that, and I know what it, you know, I mean, I know you have to get like a nice camera. I know you have to get the lights. I know you have to get the, the, the lava, you know, like the, the mics and good boom and everything. Audio is you know, key, man. The audio, you know, I, I, and I know, I mean, that's what I always hear. So I, mean, I always get the, <laughs> I always get the good audio. So, um, so like, and I know the mixing and the, in the back, you know, color correction, all of the things. I mean, I know. So, um, but I think the biggest, the biggest lessons I've learned or like the most that has the most impact on what I put out there has been the writing mm. because I mean, and cause I started out and I, I didn't, I didn't like writing. I mean, I didn't, I really, I, I thought I was all right at it, but then I, I, you know, for fun, for some, just make something up. I was like, what the hell is that? I was like, um, writing but, is hard. Yeah. It's yeah. Really yeah. Hard. yeah. That's because my first film was, it's like you, I mean, and I've written stuff. It, that was the first thing that I wrote, you know, the first film that I, the first short film that I made, and it was like that was the first thing you wrote was the first. It was probably the second thing I wrote. Yeah. Okay. But that's still like really. So I'm learn. You know, I had to learn a lot. Yeah. In the writing, and that's just a, a lot to learn, and that that has the biggest impact on on what comes out, uh, at the very because I I basically I wrote it, I produced. I was like, we're doing this one. So I was like, you know, what size was your team on your first two? Uh, first two, I'd say maybe ten people. Like, okay. are you talking production? Yeah, just produ- production. Yeah, yeah. I'd say you know that we had a script person, scripty, 
couple of sound people, maybe four, uh, two or three camera people, a couple of grips, a, uh, a slate guy, um, a producer, you know, I mean, maybe 10 or 14, maybe. Okay. Most. Small. What do you, what do you expect yeah. to get for this one? Like what, what's the size uh, um, of this production? You know, maybe, to the last. maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit more, you know, m- more. M- maybe 20, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it, it depends on how much I raise. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, the good thing about this area too is, uh, there's a lot of people who are thirsty to work on something like that, you know? So if you have, yeah, if you have some yeah. scenes you want to shoot here, like you were talking about the Nature's river yeah. and you put out uh, a call, dude, I think you'll have people just lining up, honestly. Yeah. Well, that's what, uh, that's what Doug is going to help me out with. So hopefully, uh, but, uh, I'm actually putting out a call very soon right now because we are going to um, – I, I, I want to do a promotion at the OTC conference, kind of have some actors over there, kind of shake hands, you know, get everybody – you know, tell everybody about about the project and everything. Uh, you want to go, go get some babies. Yeah. OTC, yeah. What, what's, what's the OTC? It's called the Offshore Technology Conference. Yeah. Okay. It's – it's kind of like the Sundance of, of, of oil and gas industry, <laughs> and it's in Houston. I mean, there's a huge in it, no, no pun intended. There's a huge industry in like in like doing video production work for oil companies. Yeah, because they always yeah. they always have some kind of conference, oh, yeah. and they always need a video for it, and sure, sure, good shots of their rigs and stuff like that. So I could see. I I, I know a lot of people who, who do that who. You know, like industrial work, photographers, commercial and yeah. shoots, and yeah, you know, they, they they you make you make some money. Yeah, I've just done my own projects. Yeah, so I I've been spending money, not making. Money, <laughs> well, I think you would be bored of tears if you decided to do that. Yeah, it's honestly, a, probably a drag. Well, I, yeah, I've I did I I worked as a, as a PA, and I mean, eh, it was it was it was it was cool. It was cool oh, yeah? to be on set. What yeah. kind of what kind of production were you a PA on? It was. Um, I think it was like a Memorial Herman or, or, uh, yeah, some, some hospital. Some hospital. Yeah. yeah. But they, but, and man, they, they make you do all these impossible things and they're like, just make it happen. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Well, don't, don't ever work in the corporate world if you do. If you're a creative in the corporate world, you will be, you'll, it's a soul sucking experience. Well, they, it, it wasn't bad, but they just told me to go return, like, they bought a whole bunch of stuff from Ikea, from Container Store, from Target, from every, all these department stores. And they were like, okay, we're going to return them. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. And, and which is, which they bought fine. it just for the production. We need to, we need to save money on this. Oh, no, 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 yeah. oh, oh I, I, yeah. I do it all the time. Yeah. I, I did it all, you know, on the last. <laughs> That's a good trick, <laughs> That's man. That's a gorilla trick right there. Yeah, I, like I like that. So I went there and they're like, oh, but you can't get cash. You have to go get a, a check. You have to get a check uh, made out to the company, and I was like, "What?" Was, and it was it was just so they put that on you, yeah. <laughs> so I like like, and I had to just I had to go talk to like the president of the container store and yeah. get them to make a. Ch- I was like, "Man, this is just yeah, yeah." So that's not fun. So, Shoot, yeah, it's just it's You're like I want to just make films, okay? <laughs> now you got me committing fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I. I <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was just a, uh, which I mean, I cash is. I'm like, okay, let's go return it. You know, whatever. But uh, yeah. maybe for the books, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, for the book. Yeah, yeah. it was for their books. So. Anyway. Yeah, that's that's my favorite part of uh, filmmaking. Honestly, to me, it's the most fun is solving problems. Right. That's for sure. Yeah, that's where it's real fun, especially with guerrilla filmmaking and trying mm. to do things as cheaply or I guess I should say as freely as you possible can. Dude, sure, that's sure. where it gets really fun. Yeah. Yeah. But there's like um there's a point where it's like okay you, you, you I mean I don't like I I want to I want to I don't want to have I want to have more resources than I need to tell the story. Right. So I'm I'm kind of like I uh I I want I want to work with more, you know, I want to have more money to be able to like secure a location rather than come in whenever and hope nobody shows up whenever for permits. Or, right. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, if if it's I've I shot at a public location, yeah. and it's just a mess. It's just 
variables that you can't control and it's like uh oh, we well, always I, have people looking at the camera too as they pass it's that too you yeah. know just people in the background and just you know you got to be quiet or, or bits of like trash that. floating by and- or like the light maybe dim the light or you know just yeah so it, it it's best to pay for to have it to be able to do whatever you whatever you need to and i, I want to have more time to to shoot for sure because i've always run out of time and it's always like hampered my storytelling you know it, oh for sure yeah because you yeah. gotta you gotta rush things together uh yeah you know you 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 can't uh you can't get everything that you need and then and then even like you can have like such a solid plan for shooting mm-hmm. but then mm-hmm. once you get on location you can you find out that this isn't going to work and you got to come up with sure. something different you know so there's things like that that mm-hmm. happen too you know so yeah yeah absolutely it 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 always happens like i was filming in a uh in an apartment and I actually had it, had the location, had a key and everything. And I put electric, it was like a abandoned, like a vacant apartment Yeah. and I put electricity in, but, but they had a bed and we were going to film, have somebody on the bed and film them. And then, uh, whenever what kind, we, what kind of movie was this? Mm. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just making so, jokes. <laughs> so it, but, 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 so we did a rehearsal like a week before and whenever the people got in the bed, the bed like broke. It was just like an old bed. Oh yeah. And I was like, okay, so what if that would have happened? If what if I didn't do yeah. the rehearsal mm-hmm. a week before? Yeah, know? then you would have to halt production and go get a bed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we 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 drill. We had drill. Or fix we, it. Yeah. We had stuff to to fix it, but it would have been you know it just but would have been more time to waste. Yeah, that would have been that would have been yeah. you know a couple hours gone or or at least an hour gone. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, and when once you're paying people, you're not just paying one person. You're paying like fifteen or twenty people all at the same time. And you're like, oh. With small yeah, films so. like that, do you uh, is there like a is there like a union or something, or is it still pretty much like you know you work out whatever the deal is with the guys with whoever's helping well, you? Well, you know it depends on who you pick up. Yeah, obviously. interns. You could probably find interns, film yeah. school students. And- yeah. Uh, and and I know you can get those in in Austin. Yeah. You can find a lot of a lot of film students in Austin who will work for pretty cheap and everything. Yeah. Uh, but but you you kind of th- there are unions. You, you don't have to use a union. This mm-hmm. is Texas. You don't have to. You know, uh, I, I've I've you I've gone through a Screen Actors Guild, and they have just a few paperwork hoops that you have to jump through. Yeah. But if you're under. Two hundred fifty thousand. That's right. There's a limit to it. Yeah. Right? If if you're under like two hundred and fifty thousand, then you don't have to really worry. You don't really or, have to so, or even fifty thousand. I think it's like, you know, you don't have to worry about. There's that. also the get what you pay for thing too. I'm sure. Well, I mean, I, just, I I've paid for overpaid for stuff <laughs> in my time, you know. So you don't necessarily get what you pay for. Yeah. And that I've underpaid for stuff too, you know. So it, it's all you're making. 20 deal you're meeting all of these people on a shoot and you're paying everybody some of them you're paying more some of you're paying less and then uh some people get overpaid some people get underpaid or you know yeah it's just kind of the way it works depending on how how it works out you know how the deal works sure what's what do you find is the most difficult thing about about doing what you do is it getting the funding uh yeah uh it's well i I don't know. I mean, it, it's 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 all fun. I yeah, I, I, I love yeah. every even even raising money. Even the, I, I even can, the bad parts are probably more fun yeah. than sitting in an office job, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, uh, like I've I've dialed for dollars. I've I've done that in 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 my previous job. I'd rather be dialing for for a film. You know, I'd rather be raising money for a film and selling myself rather than like a, a product instrument. cold calling for yeah. Affleck, yeah. Yeah, like life insurance or something, which is good. You know, everybody everybody should have something, but uh but uh this one I mean, I, I feel like I you have a personal attachment to it. Yeah, a, a real yeah. big attachment to it. So um it, but you know, raising money is is pretty difficult, but I I always figured like, hey, I've got a background in sales. Mhm. If like if I can't do it, then nobody can. Yeah. You know, it's like I mean, I I should be able to do that. Well, I it's be able it's, to raise it's like a good skill to have because a lot of creatives aren't good at selling themselves. You know, or so I've heard. I mean, yeah, but, so yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's kind of a trope, anyway. You know, there's always that. Uh, mm. What it was? It's always like 
you see a producer and a director arguing with each other all the time. <laughs> what sure, you are? Sure. What are you doing with my money? You know, that's yeah, it's it's kind of that old adage. Uh, yeah, creatives yeah. aren't very good with money most of the time. Yeah, and but but you you know, uh, you know after you go through a couple of them, you kind of know where to spend the money, where not to spend the money. I've been getting better at paying everybody kind of, you know, flattening it out. I mean, spreading the money around yeah. to everybody really and not Do you have like paying. a team that you built? Um uh, I've I have I've worked with probably a different crew on each on yeah. each film. I mean, I did the first two in Houston and I did the 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 third one in in Austin. And the third one in Austin was definitely it was just a different crew, you know. Uh but I've worked with all sorts of different, you know, people. Uh, I, I imagine I'll probably work with different people over here since it's it's in Beaumont. I'll probably hire local. That'd be cool. Then, yeah. you know, it just makes more sense than bringing we'd, we'd people We'd appreciate in. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's for yeah. sure. We'd well, appreciate I mean, people, it. Yeah. People out here mm-hmm. uh, are pretty eager. You know, yeah. there's a lot of people oh, yeah. that want to that do things, you know. It's just they don't. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They're here. You know. Yeah, we don't want Houston still our swag on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, too late. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> we, we want to keep we want to keep our Boomtown swag. You know, it's you guys know that Austin is out there. That's like oh, totally oh, kick oh, everybody's ass. Oh, so, oh yeah, Austin's, nah, Austin's failing right now. Yeah, we're the <laughs> Houston and Beaumont. We're tight with each other. Well, yeah, you know we're, what I mean? we're we, like we're like close I would, cousins. I would probably yeah. say that we yeah. share. Yeah. We sh- and we all know. hate Dallas, so it's like you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah, he likes. Dallas, I love Dallas, actually. but you know, <laughs> maybe we all hate Austin now. I kind of like Dallas. Too. I hate Austin. <laughs> I gotta tell you, man. I've been hating Austin for a long time. I hate it. Yeah, yeah. I hate it so much. I it it gives me anxiety thinking about having a um like a set in Austin. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here thinking about well, trying to film in Austin out in an exterior location, mm-hmm. and it's giving me anxiety right now <laughs> thinking about it. Really? Yeah. Like just thinking about it. It's because it's I mean, so it's, crowded. It's like so overpopulated. Depends on where you want to shoot. I guess I shot in thirteen or I mean, well, f- uh, five different locations in Austin, and I yeah. mean, I, of course, I wasn't like any. I just had a small budget. It was very sure. small, but but it was, um, it it, it was great. I mean, I you know I, you just call people if if you know. I mean, well, I I lived over in Austin for in during 2017, so it was. I basically called a friend of mine mm-hmm. who had a house, and she let me use their house, and then yeah. you know like. Uh, you know, retail is is you can get retail for you know probably sometimes like a hundred bucks like a day. Yeah. So yeah. that's you know. Well, there's just so that's the one good thing is there's just so many places. There. I mean, that's so true. So many people. That is there. true. And there's a lot of and, and a lot of people that own the places that you'd want to shoot at are probably pretty cool people. And you'd be like, hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. We I'm, shot. We my shot. My biases up. are showing. I'm sorry. <laughs> we shot. Up and down uh, airport, airport boulevard, so okay. like no, North Austin. Mm-hmm. We shot over at the I Love Video, and they were they're really they're really nice. Yeah. I mean, it's like a shrine to like video rental. What was right. the guy that what was the guy that did that uh that Slackers movie? Was it David Fincher? Or? Wait, what? What now? Uh, Slacker? Slacker? Is it was it Slacker? That movie that basically Link put Letter? Austin on the Link Later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He you. That movie that came out in the '90s, it was basically like a day in the life living in Austin, Texas, in the '90s, and it kind of put that area on the map. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, it it was yeah. It just went from character to character to character. Just hearing like kind of Drag like rats and all the oh okay yeah you just yeah, yeah you you you're kind of a sounds, fly fly on the wall. Sounds kind of clerksy. Yeah, yeah, it was black yeah. and white. You know? Okay, and it was around yeah. the. I think it was around the same time as Clerks. So I don't know the exact. Well, it, it it wasn't it wasn't black and white. But it wasn't. No, no. Oh, no. Yeah. But it. But uh. But yeah, I and and I kind of made my film almost kind of like that, uh-huh. like just going walking from like store to store. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, so that that makes sense with the with the going a girl going in and out of stores thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And which one? What is that one called? It's called Lucy. Lucy. I. I, I haven't. I've still Oh, it's not finished? Right. Yeah. It's 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 pretty close. It's yeah. pretty close. But the, there's the music is still I got to get somebody to to You're really still put tweaking some it? music. So yeah. so I'm I'm sure you have a a pretty good like editing suite in your own home and all that and you kind of 
you have like a room dedicated to it. You tell your wife, I'm I'm in my room, I'm editing. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah, yeah. don't bother me, I'm editing. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. it's it's my room. It's my little office or whatever. I put you all go my, and like there are have, no windows and you just disappear for like eight hours. Oh yeah. I mean, man. I've got posters. Yeah, that's and, what yeah. we do in here is that we don't have windows, so we come in here and it's just like it's dark outside whenever I leave sometimes, so it's kinda weird. Wow. And you can you can spend so much time like tweaking, not even like editing. I'm just talking about tweaking. Like, oh, yeah. You can yeah, spend yeah. so much time. You can spend two hours on one single cut, sliding a scrub bar back and forth, like trying mm, to figure out the mm. heads and tails of it. Like, just the the timing is, is so hair, perfect. Is that hair flip? Should I do it after the hair flip or before the hair? Flip? And then the the audio is even worse too, because especially when you're trying to get music and sound effects and everything, you're like, man, yeah, mm-hmm. blending. Mm-hmm. Do I need do I need more? Do I need less? For sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like how many decibels do I go up? Because <laughs> I'm I, I pretty much did the the sound mix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm. Putting voices in there and then trying to, you know, if, if you know, I mean, it, you know, usually the, the music will kind of like hide any, any dips it's kind in, of a blur, the, yeah. in the white noise yeah. and oh, everything. Yeah. yeah. You but, should see the kind of tricks I use to do this podcast. It's kind of oh. scary. It's kind of scary sometimes. Like the, the, what you can do with editing is really kind of weird. Oh yeah, you can I've, make it, I've made. You can make it sound. Uh, you can make it do whatever you want it to. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can get somebody to say whatever. They- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I think we have enough. We have enough uh, audio of us of me and him saying anything that we could probably make us say anything. Maybe I need to do that for a project one time. Oh, try Just to get me you, to say some make you say up horrible stuff. things. Yeah, peach. I could eat a peach all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a callback. Yeah. Well. How much time we done? I think I think it's a uh, yeah. I think we're probably good. We got a uh, we got things we got to get to. We should put so, a little bow on it. But bow, uh, yeah. uh, before mm-hmm. we go though, you want to you want to maybe uh, tell us what's coming out? Do you you said you're almost through with the second video? We're gonna put all the links and stuff like that. Do you have anything mm-hmm. for our listeners you would you would like to know, or maybe uh, a way for them to help fund your next one? Anything? Uh, yeah, yeah. My well, my first film it's called Megan's Journey. And it's uh it's it's out on Amazon. Okay. So you can rent oh, or, cool. or or purchase it, yeah, on Amazon. And I'm going to put the second one up there as well. It's called a mild skirmish, and that's actually won an award over here at at the Boomtown. That's right. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, very yeah, cool. that's what I read here. What year yeah. was that? Uh last year. Last year? Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they pushed it back this year. They're, they yeah, haven't yeah. done it the, yet mm-hmm. this year. Right. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. They and, just did the 48-hour film race a couple weeks this, ago. No, this past this, weekend. This past weekend, yeah. yeah. Okay, so then in a few more months, it'll... Or I think, next I think month, maybe or next month, yeah. Next month. probably. Yeah, okay. that sounds about right. Well, cool, yeah. cool. Are you going to be here? Uh, I, I think so, yeah. So you're, so. you're going to be... So if you want to find them at the festival, you can do that too, yeah? That'd be yeah, cool. yeah. And, and I'm going to... And so I'm going to... I'm going to probably launch my Kickstarter for the Spindletop short film. Huh. Uh, next month. Okay. So it's going to be on Kickstarter. Probably just search Spindletop. Yeah. Uh, there's also we'll have to get a link from you so we can put it with this episode. Okay. For sure. And and there's I mean the website it's still being uh, tinkered around with. I mean I'm, I still got to get to it, but it's SpindletopMovie.com. Okay. And then Twitter SpindletopMovie, Instagram SpindletopMovie. Yeah. Uh, and there's an I think email. Facebook. Uh, what's the email? In- info at. Yeah. Yeah. Info at spindletopmovie.com. Yeah, so if you have any kind of uh, if you have any things to add or anything you want to get a hold of of, of Jason for, you can uh, you can send it mm-hmm. to you can send it to that email. Uh, man, thanks thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure, and I look forward to hearing uh, like production notes stuff like that mm-hmm. uh, when you come over here and you start shooting and stuff. De- definitely let us know. Yeah, for sure. You know, if there's okay. anything we could help you with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I can definitely hold a boom mic, no problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I could do this all day. So if you want yeah. somebody, I'll I'll do it for free. No big yeah. deal. I'll stand <laughs> there. And right, hold, right. Yeah, I'll stand yeah, there. We and hold just this. we want we want uh, we, we just want cool stuff. To we, happen. Well, we want cool yeah. stuff to happen. Uh, we want this area to get a little bit more exposure for the things that have happened here because we yeah. think it's we think it's special. That's why we do it. Well, yeah. well, this okay. So this film, you know, I'm doing the short film right now, and and I I would I have fifteen thousand. I got a grant from the Houston Arts Alliance, so I I want to. You know, I I, I want to raise another fifteen. Yeah, and that's just for the show. That's just for the first first scene. Right. But the feature film, I mean, I, you know, it's 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 going to be a, a real a big you know a yeah big that's movie. a humongous undertaking. Okay, and this is 
like I'm thinking over over a million dollars, yeah. you know, multi million dollar, you know. Yeah. And so it's it's gonna be about Beaumont, you know. Yeah. I mean it, it's about Beaumont. It's about the history. It's the history of the oil industry, it's the history of the Gulf Coast. Maybe that'll maybe that'll be like a, a stepping stone because there's another real, really great story about Beaumont. It involves uh, betting booze and brothels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah, that could be yeah. a stepping stone towards something about that. Hopefully yeah, so. and yeah. that would be cool. <laughs> but yeah, but, but whenever I, you know, when, whenever I heard like that, that was the first time they drilled along the Gulf Coast, mm-hmm. and the expert. Whenever I heard the experts, yeah, the ex- expert geologists said that Even there's enough. no way that there's oil along the Gulf Coast. So this was like 18, 1890. Right. Yeah. I mean, think about what we knew then. Yeah. But. The well, they thought they yeah. thought that oil experts. was like in hills. Yeah, but doctors also thought yeah. that cocaine helps solve your ghost blood problem too, at that time. <laughs> so, so that's experts. Yeah, too many ghosts in your blood. So. Yeah, do cocaine about it. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, man. Thanks. But yeah. Thanks. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I, I like I like the idea. I yeah, can't wait too. to see uh, see what happens with it. And yeah, uh, and yeah man. Uh, reach out to them. Uh, stay in touch. Spindle Top Movie. Jason Leal. Yeah. Thank you, man. All right. Thank you so much. Say, could I borrow sentiments for tomorrow? You will receive them in the same condition in which they were given now. My hopeless romancing, a bit of your dancing. There will be no concern concerning that I've not... Uh, all right, well, that was the episode. Uh, big thanks to Jason. Thanks for driving all the way from Houston. Yeah, appreciate uh, you, dude. You know, doing this kind of on a on a whim. You know, we always appreciate all of our guests, but when people take the extra mile, it's really cool. Also, be sure to go check out uh, check out his his movies on Amazon. It's Megan Journey is on, Megan's Journey is on Amazon, and then he also has A Mild Skirmish is going to be coming on. We watched that. He sent us some links to it, and that one is really cool. Um, he has the Kickstarter going, but I think it's over by now. But you can go check out what's being done at spindletopmovie.com. And then if you go to info at spindletopmovie.com, you can, uh, you can send them an email and uh, check it out. But uh, I just want to do a special shout-out to our patrons. Uh, Jordan Stringer, Lance Killian, Brian Castino, Doug Waldrop, Michael Saar, Ben McClellan, and Randy Edwards. If you're interested in becoming a patron... Uh, head on over to patreon.com forward slash A to Z BMT because what we're doing today is working on t-shirts. So we got some merch coming to our Patreon. Thank God, finally. Yeah, this is kind of y'all's surprise. I know I hit everybody up for uh, shirt sizes, but uh, it's coming. We got them. We got them. We're working on them right now. That's right. And stay tuned because in the next coming episodes, we're going to have uh, sort of a, a meta thing going on. We have kind of started this network, and these the other guys are working on the studio. We're going to be interviewing them. We have Tyler Knows Everything podcast coming yeah. up. And then right after that, it's going to be the Box of Content Boys. Yeah. Uh, and those are going to be really fun. It's kind of silly interviews. Yeah, kind of going to be like a simulcast kind of thing. But if you have a guest that uh, you think should be on our show or that you think would be interesting to hear about, send us an email. Feedback at azpodcast.com. Slip into our DMs. Generally, any way you want to get in touch with us, we would enjoy that. That's right. All right, guys. Well, that's been the show. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next time. 